Hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, and today's topic is watercolor chemistry. So, you don't have to have a watercolor set to do this. You can actually make your own colors using food coloring. So, gather the following materials first. A little pitcher of water. Tap water is fine. Glass containers, three of these. These are just small little glass containers to hold water. So three of those. Three different food coloring dyes, but they need to be the following colors. Yellow, blue, and red for our primary colors. A pencil, a straw, a little container of table salt, and isopropyl alcohol. Any percentage works. This one just happens to be higher, and I put mine in a spray bottle, but you can put it in a glass container too. Paint brushes, and Paper. So I happen to have watercolor paper here. It doesn't have to be watercolor paper, but a thicker paper will work better for absorbing the water. So the first thing you need to do is mix your colors. So in your glass containers with your food coloring, put one to three drops of food coloring into your container. And with your straw, dip into the water, put your finger on the top, lift, and add that amount of water to your little container. Do that three to five times. Three to five times. I'm going to do one, two, three, four and five. So you get a really nice concentrated color. Do that for each one of your colors and with each one of these colors the red, the blue, and the yellow are primary colors. Primary meaning first are of their own kind. which means you don't mix other colors to get red, blue, and yellow. But when you mix these colors together, as we're going to do with our experiment, you'll find you'll create what's called a secondary color. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix. Now that you've mixed and prepped your colors, it's time to mix or to focus on what we're going to be drawing and coloring. Now, with this part of the activity, we're going to look at secondary colors using the primary colors that we mixed with the food coloring. I cut the straw into thirds, into three pieces, so that we can then dip and add to the watercolor paper. On the watercolor paper, I used a lid to trace three circles, and then I labeled the different primary color combinations that we're gonna add to each circle. Red plus blue, blue plus yellow, yellow plus red, to see by mixing them what color, secondary color combinations we will get. So let's start with red, and blue. So I'm using the straw to add little dots of color. So add equal amounts. So it looks like I added five of each. And just sort of mix until you see a color forming. And from red and blue the color combination becomes purple. Now, 
blue, and yellow. And blue and yellow mixes together to form green. And yellow mixed together gives orange. So from these primary color combos, oops, I got some spill there, of red and blue, we get secondary color purple. Blue and yellow, we get a secondary color of green. And then yellow and red, a secondary color of orange. Try this out and see what other color combos you can do and you can mix from these. Now I wanted to show you my setup and the first thing I did was I took my paper and a random mug or drinking glass or anything with a round shape and I traced with my pencil three circles. Connecting circles on each one of these pieces of paper. I taped these to the top. You may label them if you would like. And these are two scientific terms we're going to go and demonstrate and do today. The first is hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water. Philic meaning loving. Water loving. Hydrophobic. Ever heard of a phobia? So you have water fearing water fearing. And we're going to use two chemicals to see what it does to our paintings using hydrophilic and hydrophobic chemicals as they react with water. Now I did my tracing of those three circles and I went ahead and labeled mine. You don't have to label yours but if you want to I labeled R for red red 1 for primary color, blue 1, blue primary color, yellow 1, yellow primary color, and then I listed the secondary colors. Now, once you have drawn your circles, you are ready to paint. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, and first I put a little bit of water on my paintbrush here. And since I'm using watercolor paper, I'm going to go ahead and wet the paper a little bit so it's a little bit more absorbent and easily able to soak up the stuff. So I'm going to start with the water loving page here. I'm going to add my red pigment. Here we go. Now, I'm not that clean of a painter, or I'm not a gifted painter at all, but I'm going to try my best to stay in the lines. And again, notice this watercolor could be more concentrated if you wanted to add more of the dye to it. Okay, there's my red. I'm going to go ahead and do this red too. There's that one, so I don't cross-contaminate my colors. I'm going to set that one in the water bin. Next, a little bit more of the water. I'll go to blue. Oh, this is a bigger paintbrush. All right, back in the water. Last one, yellow. Great. Now let's do and use the chemical. So, hydrophilic, water loving, meaning absorbing, meaning liking, meaning holding hands with, happens to be salt. So I'm going to take some of the salt and sprinkle it over my painting. And once I do that, observe what happens to your painting. Notice what's happening to the pigment. 
the pigment seems to be attracted to loving the salt. So the salt is absorbing that water, absorbing that pigment, and you notice the salt is changing color. Now, let this fully dry and see what it does to your painting when it is fully dry. Now, the same applies for hydrophobic. I have here the isopropyl alcohol in... There we go. Spraying that on the painting. And just like you did with the salt, wait and see once it dries. So we'll come back once these dry and see the results. Now, while the paints are drying, I wanted to go over in our journals. So in our journals, we'll need to write down some of the few things. So like what we did at the various beginnings of creating our journal, listing our experiment name, watercolor chemistry, the date, and the scientist who is doing it, our scientists as a group, your observations and questions. So ask some questions about what is a dye? What if I mix colors? What are the results going to be? And then let's form a hypothesis. For this one, my hypothesis was, will mixing dye make chemistry watercolor paint? So will those mixings of dye create a painting that we can then do chemistry with? And then I had my experiment set up that I drew with all of my experiment materials. And then I drew out what the colors did. Now, Roy G. Biv are short, that is short for all the visible light colors, where you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then violet. All of those colors combined are visible light. And I wrote down from my painting the different color combos that we made. Red and blue making purple, red and yellow making orange, blue and yellow making green. And that red, blue, and yellow are primary colors. And then I wrote down the scientific words hydrophilic and hydrophobic, and I drew my paintings beside them as what the chemical did to the painting once I did the painting. So it looks like the painting is dry, so let me hold it up. So looking at the painting, I have here the hydrophobic or fearing, water fearing, and look what happened. Notice when I used the spray bottle and sprayed the isopropyl alcohol, notice it seemed to move away the pigments whenever I sprayed it in certain areas, pushing it out of the way. It was afraid of that chemical, so it pushed those chemical dyes out of the way. Whereas on the other side, you have hydrophilic or hydro-loving, water-loving, and that's when we use the salt. And notice wherever the salt fell, you have higher concentrations of pigment, where it absorbed that pigment or dye. Now at the very top, I did a separate painting. And comparing these two hydrophobic and hydrophilic paintings, what do you think this chemical is that I used on my painting? If you guessed hydrophobic, you are correct, because notice the pigment moved away from where the blue pigment was. So this was the isopropyl alcohol. Now what kind of paintings, what kind of art can you share? And the last part is sharing your work. So in the comment section below, please share your work. It doesn't have to be the circles. You can draw and design your own unique art piece using the properties of hydrophobic and hydrophilic chemicals with salt and alcohol. And what if you use both on your same painting? Check it out, try it out. And remember, science never stops.